Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are on the YouTube channel CNC Basis. This channel's only got 424 subs. They actually were a vendor at one time. If you go through his videos, you can see that on certain uh, products that I guess he was selling. This video really needs to be seen to be believed. Wiring and configuring a Wan Yang VFD and spindle step-by-step -step setup. Now, many of you already realize that when vendors do videos like this, it's very vague. Usually they just cover brief setup in terms of programming the VFD. They never cover in detail what cables to use, proper grounding, none of that's covered. Let's see if this guy does. Spindle and VFD set. It comes pre-configured to run manually. You only AI need to wire the spindle to the VFD and the VFD to specific voltage. By pressing run, the spindle will start running clockwise. Set speed on knob and adjust the speed as desired. To run spindle counterclockwise, just press reverse and stop to stop. Now let's configure. Now I think we can all be in agreement that this unit is still powered on, right? I think we can also all be in agreement that the cables here being used are not the proper double shielded cables that are required for a CNC spindle. The VFD to be commanded by terminals. First, switch jumper. Sh now, first and foremost, many of you already realize don't go poking around inside of a three phase VFD with it plugged in. Common sense. Showed here from VR to VT. Are you seeing this? I hope you are. This guy was a vendor. See right there? LEDs plugged in. Then set PD001 to 1. By pressing program, then toggle up or down to PD001. Press set, toggle to 1, and press set again. Now we configure speed, to be commanded by terminals as well, by fo First and foremost guys, never go poking around inside of a VFD or any electrical device when it's powered on. Logic goes along. Following previous steps, and setting PD002 to 1. If you bought spindle and VFD as a set. The VFD should have come pre-configured as per spindle specifications. You can verify the settings by pressing set from PD003 to PD005. You wouldn't have to verify any of the settings if it came pre-configured from you as a vendor, right? I mean, isn't that logical? To run spindle clockwise, we jump terminals D. Believe this shit? I mean, is this crazy or what? ECM and FOR. Unbelievable. Still powered on. Look at this. And for spindle speed. We I like I like he's got an open lead here. There's nothing even connected. Here. 10 voltage to VI terminal. Now, I want you guys to think about something logically, okay? This guy's got 3,249 views on this video as of April 7th, 2025. He's got 50 likes. Once again, 50 supposed humans looked at this and said, you're doing a great job, buddy. What we see here is terrifying. Many of you who know anything about electronics know how terrifying this is. Once again, this is three-phase power output on that VFD. It's amazing to me, amazing to me. Most of my videos, even when they're hot, get maybe four or 500 views. That's like a hot video. This guy, like many others, get 3,300 playing with open leads inside of the three phase VFD. The VFD uses analog zero to 10 voltage. We'll use a three volt battery to emulate a potentiometer. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Let's listen to that carefully again. Voltage. We'll use a three volt battery to emulate. That's a one and a half volt battery. Emulate a potentiometer. We'll do the same with a nine volt battery that should bring the VFD to almost 400 hertz. Nine volts.
Now, in order to make a real tutorial, if you're going to do it, and you're going to be a real vendor, and I mean a real vendor in that you actually care about your client safety, first and foremost, you'd be explaining what you're doing, not just talking connections. You'd be explaining about the cabling, the grounding once again. Everything is a detail that must be covered to assure that your clients are number one, safe, number two, that they're producing a system that will be stable, especially when dealing with three-phase VFD along with a spindle combination, because we all know, or should know, that the VFD and spindle emit the largest amount of EMI produced. To run spindle counterclockwise, we jump DCM and our EV terminals. Again. I like how he just pulls the leads apart. That's always fun. The open of each relay and ECM to voltage in. So, one relay runs clockwise and the second relay runs counterclockwise. For spindle speed, we must connect 0 to 10 voltage to the analog output of the breaker board. For this C11G breakout board, we must connect a 12 volt power supply to analog terminal. Oh look, there's that USB controller also known as the UC100. Many of you already know how unstable this unit is, especially when you put it in close proximity like this and once again we're dealing with a 5 volt powered USB universal serial bus device. I'll put all of the information on screen. Of course, he's not discussing why this unit should not be used. That doesn't matter. He's trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to run. NVI of the VFD to the 10 volt terminal and ACM to ground to make ground for power supply and VFD common. Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there if you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course, I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. Now we set the speed to 24,000 RPMs. You can see the spindle is not running at 100%, therefore we need to adjust the potentiometer to calibrate the spindle speed. Now I want you to think of how ironic this is. Before he just said earlier in the video that you'd receive your unit and it'd be pre-configured upon you receiving it. If that's the case, why in the hell would you have to adjust anything on your VFD? Should it came from him or whatever he came from, as far as being the term configured, it should have been set up by the time you received it. You shouldn't even have to do any of this. To power this VFD, we need to connect live, live. All right, now the unit's off. Neutral for 220 voltage, as per this VFD specifications. You must connect the spindle ground to VFD ground. If you're not sure which one is the ground wire, you can verify. Now. I want to make sure we're all on the same page here because he's got three leads coming in to power 220. That means he only needs two power leads and he should have a ground. Why he would have three leads coming in here makes no sense unless this is three phase. Okay, so when I say three phase, usually it's single phase 220 coming in, three phase coming out. I don't know what the hell he's got hooked up here. This is not right. This is something you need to pay very close attention to. R, S, and T are designed for nothing but power. Okay? R, power in. S, power in. T, power in. The only time you would ever use three leads like that would be when you're powering from a three-phase source. 
if you're powering a single phase 110 it be two leads going in if you're powering from a single phase 220 it be two leads going in and the additional lead on the 110 and the 220 single phase would come over here to the ground this is fact this is the actual diagram and I'll put it on screen here from HY so once again you can see a high quality vendor hooking this up blatantly incorrectly based upon the diagram from HY and I recommend all of you do your due diligence to make sure what I'm saying is accurate the other thing is you can plainly see here that we only have one ground terminal now that being said that is why I offer my ground terminal splitter for VFDs because with one terminal and you have your power coming into the VFD on this side power going out of the VFD on this side and with only one ground terminal you would have two connections going to ground which makes it pretty inconvenient to do it safely to have this connection jump over here it's easier to just put a bus bar in and you're all set because the bus bar has multiple locations for you to once again base that ground allocation from RST as well as a ground allocation from the spindle power going out so keep in mind what I'm telling you and once again you can see it right here so now when guys once again and you know who you are that get their panties in a bunch oh you're being technical this and that am I because remember this and, and I really really want you guys to remember this whenever you have a problem vendors like this will always say well you did something to the unit Think about how many guys have gone through that. No, you've touched it, you've destroyed it, you've but then you watch a video like this and you gotta wonder how many videos like this are floating around that they've been sent. And then when they get sent that video, they follow and mimic what they see, and guess what? What you see is what you see here. And if you have a problem, then he can hide behind, well, you did it. I didn't. I'm just telling you facts. So always read documentation first. This is a blatant no no. If the spindle is running in the wrong direction, we just swap any two wires, and that should fix it. Thanks for... When he said you could swap any two wires, it's for the coil of the spindle. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That is correct. You can swap any two wires on the power, on the spindle power going to the unit. And that would be, once again, when you're looking at the VFD, it's on the right side, right over here. And that would allow you to get the spindle to rotate in the correct direction. With information like this going out, is it really a question as to why so many people have problems on CNC zone forms?